I want to preface this video by saying everything I've heard thus far about the Z Flip 4 is in my opinion completely wrong. You see, there's this narrative out there that's being pushed claiming that the Z Flip 4 is a subtle minor refinement over the Z Flip 3. But after having spent the last 72 hours with Samsung's latest clamshell foldable, I'm here to tell you that the Z Flip 4 is in fact a major upgrade over its predecessor, the Z Flip 3. My name is RJ and there's a lot to unpack here. So grab a beverage, relax your shoulders, kick back and let's get right down to it. If you're one of those people who were interested in foldables from afar but didn't muster up enough courage to quite pull the trigger because of obvious concerns like durability and the battery life, now might be the perfect time to hop on board. Because in my opinion, the Z Flip 4 is finally ready for mass consumerism. And let me tell you why. Let's start off by addressing one of the major concerns plaguing foldables from the very beginning. And that my friends is the battery life. I've been an owner of the Flip series ever since its inception back in 2020. And there was no way I was able to confidently daily drive one of these phones because quite frankly, the battery life sucked. But Samsung did something very interesting this year with the Flip 4. They made this phone 4 grams heavier to add a bigger 3700mAh battery. Now when you compare it on paper to the Z Flip 3, this is only a 400mAh battery capacity increase. But thanks to the efficiency of the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor, I'm easily able to get through an entire days of use without experiencing any battery anxiety. If you've never experienced battery anxiety before, it's sort of like the 2022 version of feeling naked in public. Because are you even alive with a dead phone in your pocket? Only only joking of course, I think. I think I'm kind of joking for most people. Now using a phone for 3 days is not what I consider to be enough data to come to a better conclusion. But just going off by the screen on times I've been seeing for the past 3 days on a 5G network, things are looking really good. I'm easily averaging close to around 7 hours of screen on time using a 5G network for about 85% of my day. Now what did my past 3 days of usage look like you ask? Well it's mostly catching up with a few of my favorite Korean shows on Netflix, the usual social media scrolling, which I've been trying to keep to a minimum to about an hour a day. I took a lot of pictures using the camera to test the camera quality and a few zoom client meetings amongst other knickknacks. I didn't though for the life of me expect the battery life to be this good. So a significant battery improvement in itself is what I would consider to be a huge upgrade. I know a lot of people last year bought the Z Flip 3 but ultimately ended up selling it or returning it because the battery life just wasn't there. I've heard some people only get around 3 to 4 hours of screen on time and that in 2022 is not enough for many people. Now if the current screen on times I'm experiencing can keep up for the course of the next 2 weeks then we got ourselves a major W on our hands. If you guys are a fan of Samsung content then make sure you do subscribe to the channel and check back in about two weeks or so because my full review on the Z Flip 4 will be up on the channel. And while you're at it I would really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like on this video. It does help push my channel to a larger audience which does give me more exposure. So that would be much much appreciated. Let's take a step back and really break down why there is so much overall interest in the Flip lineup. Every time I pull this phone out in public someone is either staring at me or approaching me to ask a question. Usually the dialogue goes something like this. Hey, is that the new iPhone? Why would you think this is an iPhone? This is a whole folding phone. Wait a second, wait a second. What do you mean by that? What I'm trying to say is you guys wouldn't know anything about innovation. Since when did Samsung make folding phones? This is ridiculous. I mean, Apple would probably launch a folding iPhone in like the year 2054. That's how far behind they are. All jokes aside, I think why a lot of people are so interested in this particular form factor is because quite frankly, it is innovation. It's something that we don't see every day and most consumers I find are just bored with their ear over ear recycled rectangular slab of glass. The flip lineup though brings a fresh, new, unique perspective on what a smartphone can be. And that's why I feel like it's very intriguing to many people, even diehard Apple enthusiasts. We need to take a second to appreciate this matte blue color. I think it looks incredible in certain lighting conditions. And I say that because in low light, this colorway does look like a really nice blue but under brighter lights it does come off as a blue with a hue of purple. To me though in person this looks great either way. Surprisingly the hinge this year is also vastly improved. It is a little slimmer so the gap between the phone when the flip is folded isn't as prominent as it was in the past. There is also a noticeable improvement in resistance when opening the flip which to me is an indicator of a stronger more durable hinge. Making our way over to the display it still kind of blows my mind two plus years later that this phone can be unfolded to wield a 6.7 inch 1080p Super AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate. I don't know about you guys, but for myself being a tech enthusiast, this is kind of mind-blowing. This is exceptional engineering from Samsung. 
incredible stuff. The bezels this year are also thinner, coming in with a respectable 85.4% screen to body ratio. And yes, to answer your question, there is still a crease. Although it's not as noticeable this year as it was in the years past, it's a little bit less prominent and it's almost impossible to notice when you're looking at this phone directly head on. But this year, that dive your finger takes in the middle while scrolling through the phone isn't as noticeable as it was on the Flip 3. Either way, I like it and I do see this as progression. I've had no issues with the display thus far. On sunny days, the brightness is excellent, everything on my screen is vibrant and legible, which is something I couldn't confidently say on the Z Flip 3. So a huge improvement in the screen brightness. The cover display is also rocking a Super AMOLED 1.9 inch panel, and I love having a screen this size on a clamshell foldable. It's super useful to have all of your notifications displayed on the outer cover screen, to either ignore or interact with without having to unfold your phone. Using the cover screen, you can cycle through music, set an alarm, check the weather, track your steps, quickly call a contact, and do much more by just adding widgets to your cover screen. My favorite use for the cover screen is to check in on my daily steps and to call a few of my favorite contacts using the speakerphone and you can do all of this without having to physically unfold your device. So a major W on Samsung's part. The Z Flip 4 does ship with One UI 4.1 running Android 12. It's similar to what you get on the S22 but with the Flip lineup you get access to several specific features. The highlight of these features being Flex Mode which takes full advantage of the folding display. When you partially fold the Flip, Flex Mode does engage. The app that you're currently using will be split putting the main functionality on the upper half and additional interactive buttons on the bottom. There's even a new trackpad feature which helps you navigate apps faster. Like take TikTok as an example. Once you engage flex mode, the app does split into two, with the lower half giving you features to screenshot what's currently being played, increase the brightness, volume controls, and even a trackpad to help navigate the app. Now, the haptics on the Z Flip 4 haven't improved all that much. They do very much feel like last year's haptics, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but as someone who does frequently use an iPhone, I have a pretty good understanding of what good haptics can be like on a phone. Before we get into the improved cameras, I need to take a moment to talk about these dual firing speakers because these speakers have no business being this good. Thanks to these speakers, any content that I'm watching on this phone is just much more of an amplified experience. Take a quick listen for yourself and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. On paper, it may not look like the cameras have improved at all, but Samsung says the 12 megapixel main sensor is 65% brighter, which means there is a big improvement in night photography, which is clearly evident in these pictures I took in low light conditions. In normal shooting conditions, the flip forward saturation and the exposure have been improved. These images are bright and vibrant without overexposing the photo. Depending on the lighting, some images are oversaturated a tad bit, but I do feel like the sharpness and the white balance have thus far been on point. Now, the ultra wide camera is still the same 12 megapixel sensor we had on the Z Flip 3. The images are what I would consider to be pretty decent. I did notice certain pictures still have distortion along the edges, and if you take a look hard enough, you will notice it. A big miss on the Flip 4 is that it does not come with a telephoto lens, which I think is a big miss because all other Samsung flagships in this price point do come with a telephoto. But I guess that's a sacrifice we do have to make for this clamshell foldable form factor. Video is an area where Samsung generally does a particularly good job. I feel like the stabilization is really good and overall I would say these clips look really good and they are usable for social media. There's a particularly fun mode where you can record video in what's called camcorder mode when the phone is folded in half. I did find this to be a much more natural way to hold my phone in my hands while I'm shooting video and not to mention I did feel like an absolute boss recording video like this. It took me back to the 90s. If you're bored of your current smartphone and you want to experience a phone with a unique form factor that actually utilizes its frame with softer function then the Z Flip 4 is it. In my opinion, the Z Flip 4 is finally ready for prime time. To be completely honest, this phone is finally perfect. If you've been holding out for years waiting for Samsung to finally nail it, then I'm here to tell you with the Z Flip 4, your time has arrived. The Z Flip 4 is the most fun phone that's currently available on the market. It's a clamshell, highly portable, pocketable foldable that is a huge upgrade over its predecessor, the Z Flip 3. The battery life does seem to have improved tremendously, the speakers are a lot better, the hinge is a bit more rigid and more durable, and not to mention the price does remain the same at $999. At the time of this recording, Samsung is offering some incredible trading deals for the Flip 4. A few of my friends have got this phone for half the price after all the trading deals. If you are interested in picking up the Z Flip 4 for yourself, there's a link in the description below which will take you directly to Samsung's website for some awesome promos. If you made it till the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below so I know exactly who my true supporters are. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to flex with your foldable tech.